being able to know how to count rhythms and understanding what the symbols like this, this and this mean when you're reading tabs are really useful skills in being a good bassist as rhythm and the bass go together like. Today I want to go through how to count the most essential rhythms that you'll need as a bassist, as well as go through the challenges that I see private students have when they're learning rhythm. Ultimately, if you can count the rhythms with confidence, you can play them with confidence. By the end of the lesson today, you should be able to read the rhythm from a tab like this one from Aeroplane by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I'll also show you a really fun rhythm challenge that you can try which will really help with your timing. And the different rhythms we'll be looking at today are these ones. It's quarter notes where we have one note a beat, eighth notes where we have two notes a beat, triplets where you have three notes a beat, and sixteenth notes where you have four notes a beat. Now beyond that there are rhythms where you have five, six or seven notes a beat, but they are far less common so I won't go through them today. If you find today's lesson valuable, please give the video a like and do consider subscribing if you want more content like this. So let's have a look at rhythm one, which are quarter notes. These are the notes which are the easiest ones today, and every time the metronome clicks, play a note. But the goal is to play over the top of the click of the metronome. So if you're doing it right, the sound of the bass should cover the sound of the metronome clicking. And I'm just going to play the E string. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. And my focus is really trying to play exactly the same time as the click. When students are first starting out, they often play just after the click. That is, they let the metronome kind of trigger them to play like this. But you want to be right on top of the note. Now with eighth notes, we have two notes per beat, and the way to count them is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so that the and is exactly halfway between the one and the two. So now there are two ways that beginners often count or play the quarter note rhythm wrong and it's good for you to be aware of this so you can correct it if you find that you're doing it yourself. The first way beginners often get this wrong is by playing the and too late so it becomes too close to the next beat so it becomes one and two and three and four which in musical terms is called a swung rhythm and has a symbol that looks like this. And the other way that beginners often get this wrong is by playing the and beat too early so it becomes one and two and three and four and and that rhythm has a symbol like this and is quite common in modern R&B. I was busy thinking about This is a good point to point out that we can combine the rhythm. So if we take an eighth note and then a quarter note and then another eighth note and then another quarter note, we get the rhythm of one and two, three and four, which is the same rhythm as I love when students kind of work out that they can combine these rhythms to play songs that they know and their minds are like as a bassist, it's really important to get a strong sense of the end beat, which is the beat which is halfway between the main beats like this, this, this and this. The reason for that is often a bass line will land on that beat, especially when the bass is linked with a kick drum. So like one, two and three, four, one and three, four, one and three, four. So a great exercise you can do with a metronome to get a better control of the end beat is to put a metronome on and play the notes between the clicks like this. Two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. At first, it will feel impossible just to play that note in between the clicks, and you'll start drifting towards wanting to play when the click is on. But like anything, if you keep practicing it, you'll get it. And I think that exercises like that are really, really important and really helpful for you to get better control over your rhythm. Rhythm number three: triplets. If you want to swing, triplets can be your thing. Sorry. Uh, triplets are fundamental for jazz and swing. There's three notes per beat, and the way you count them is triple, 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 triple. So, like the eighth notes we looked at before, you want each one of the notes to be equally spaced. So, try to avoid counting these ones as triple, 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 triple. So triplets are using a lot of those kind of double thumb slap bass lines that you see on the internet like Davey 504 and it has a cool kind of rhythm effect like So to kind of count it out loud and 
triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Rhythm number four, 16th notes. So 16th notes are four notes per beat, and the way we count them are one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So I play it with a metronome. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So these 16th note rhythms are the basis of some really sick bass lines like Dean Town by Wolfpack. For someone first learning bass, it is difficult to get the speed up to playing 16th notes. As to be able to do it, you'll really need to alternate the picking fingers consistently, which is difficult for beginners. Now we can break up the 16th note rhythms into different combinations like the 1E end, which, which sounds like this, 1E e and 2E e and 3E e and 4E e and, and has a symbol which looks like this, or a combination of the 1 and a, which sounds like this, 1 and a, 2 and a, 3 and a, 4 and a, and has a symbol which looks like this. So I've gone through how to count all the rhythms, but let's have a quick look at the symbols. So quarter notes in tab form have a single stroke like this, whilst in normal standard music, they have a stick with a filled in ball like this. Now, whether this stick points up or down doesn't change the type of note that it is. With eighth notes in tab form, we have a single line after it, which joins up two eighth notes, or we can have a single eighth notes with one line after it. In standard notation, this is a stick with a filled in ball with a line after it. With triplets in tab form, we have three single lines with the number three joining them all up. And here's what it looks like in standard notation. And finally, with 16th notes, we have a double line joining the notes up. And as I mentioned before, we can have various combinations like this one e and or this one ander. Now the confession to make. You don't need to be able to read rhythms to become a good bassist. And I personally got to a grade eight level on bass without being that great at reading rhythms. But I found that after teaching thousands and thousands of lessons that the fastest way for beginner students to get good at rhythm is if they have a good understanding of the different types of rhythms that they may, might come across, like the ones we've covered today. And by having a solid conceptual knowledge of how rhythm works, it really helps students to be able to, I guess, categorize in their heads if the rhythm that they're hearing is, for example, a one and or if it's a one ander. So let's have a look at that Chili Peppers bass line. Under the notes, you can see these rhythm symbols. So let's make sense of them. So we have three different shapes here. We have the one ander symbol, which is these ones here. We also have the one e and symbol here. And finally, the one e and a symbol, which is the one here. So the rhythm for this bass line is one and a two e and three and a four e and one and a two e and three and a four e and a. Okay, so then if I play it, it will go one and a two e and And as a beginner, it's going to take you a while to be able to see a symbol and quickly decipher it. But like anything, you keep at it, you get there. Rhythm challenge. So the rhythm challenge is playing all the rhythms that we did today back to back without stopping. So first we'll do the quarter notes, then we'll do the eighth notes, then we'll do the triplets, then we'll do the sixteenth notes. So this exercise is a rhythm exercise that drum has commonly used. And I saw a similar exercise on the King of Guitar Tutorials, Paul David's channel. And if you can do this rhythm exercise, well, you have become a rhythm master. All right, so here's what the hit sounds like. So see if I can do it. Two. So I'd really try to challenge yourself to be able to do an exercise like that. And it's going to be particularly difficult moving from the triplets to the 16th notes. But if you can do that, well, you've done really, really well. So a big thank you to all my Patreons for your support and a special thank you to my VIP Patreon. And here's some more videos that you might enjoy.